Hi, I'm Melissa and I'm a partner manager at YouTube. That means I work with creators every day to help them optimize their channel and grow their audience. Today, I'm here with YouTube creator Mike Boyd. We're gonna be going into his channel to talk about what's going well, areas of improvement, and also answering some of Mike's own questions. But first, Mike, can you tell us a little bit more about your channel and how it's going? Yeah, so my channel is about learning new skills. I try and pick a skill at random, one that I've never tried before, and uh, just try and conquer it as quickly as possible and document that in a YouTube video. And uh, I think it's going okay. One of the very first things that I notice is that you actually have a fairly consistent upload schedule. I try to upload as often as I can without losing my marbles, but I'm not as consistent as I would like to be. One of the things that you might have considered is introducing some sort of supplementary content in between the videos that you've already been producing. I'd like to diversify, but I'm not really sure how to do that. One thing I think might do really well on your channel is live streaming content. Mm -hmm. We find that folks really enjoy live streaming because they get to see your most authentic self in real time. Yeah, but it's because they can see my authentic self that I haven't done it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, people, have, people have asked for live streams lots of times, so I know it's something that people want. Um, the only reason I haven't done it is because I'm scared. I'm, yeah. Live streaming is a different beast, but I think it's something that I should try because I'm not, I haven't even tried it. I think in general, introducing a new format to the channel can be very scary, as you mentioned. So it's important to help best prepare your fan base for this new format. For example, if you're going to live stream, maybe mention it in one of the latest uploads that you say. Like if you tune in next Tuesday, I'll be doing a special treat. I'll be live streaming. And I would actually argue that having this diversity of content is what makes a very healthy, well-rounded channel. Okay. Another thing I noticed is your traffic sources, which basically tells us how people are finding your content. Your browse feature and your suggested videos are one of the top reasons why people find your videos. One thing I noticed in particular is that your YouTube search is a little bit lower than it could be. YouTube search, of course, means what exact words and titles and descriptions are you associating with your videos that help make it more discoverable. And so if we click here, we'll actually be able to identify all the top search terms people use to find you. The very first search term being a Mike Boyd, which is great because it means you have excellent brand recognition. I notice also that there's a lot of how to being searched on the channel. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit more about how you approach titling your videos? For example, learn to versus how to? I feel that titling it how to would be misleading even though that would be better for search optimization. Because it's not a how-to video, it's more of a, this is how I did it. If people are often associating your content or your channel with how-to content, maybe that's a perfect sort of format to dive into or to explore more. So your suggestion is perhaps look at actually making how-to content in addition to my standard stuff. Exactly. A big part of this is just listening to your audience and seeing generally what they like. And we can tell this through this report by seeing people are always typing in how-to. Mm -hmm. So it might definitely be something you want to try. One of the things that you're doing really well are the thumbnails for each of your videos. My wife's going to love you because she does the thumbnails. <laughs> yeah, so, and that's actually one of the changes that we, that we made was me and my wife decided that we need to put more focus on thumbnails. You can see there's a consistent theme or look to our thumbnails um, and it's, it works. And I think that if you have good content and it's not being discovered, try revamping the thumbnails. It's, it's worked for me on a number of occasions. So you went back and actually updated a thumbnail after having uploaded it? Yeah, so we sat down, had, had a look at the channel and identified ones that we didn't think were so strong and then re-uploaded a new thumbnail um, and we saw a little bump in watch time after we uploaded it. So this little trough in the graph here is when we uploaded it and after that you can see a little rise in, in watch time. Um, I think that that is most likely attributed to the thumbnail because that is the date that we uploaded it. Another thing I noticed when looking at your watch time 
about 60% of the folks who are watching your content are not subscribed, whereas 40% of those who are watching are subscribed. So you're getting your content in front of new eyeballs. It's just a matter of reminding them to hit that subscribe button or hit that bell notification icon. So a really quick takeaway is to make sure you include calls to actions in your videos. Something as simple as don't forget to subscribe to watch this new video can come off as a really strong and authentic call to action. I've I've not done it for the last 20 videos, um, apart from the very last one, which has a very subtle call to action, just reminding people that there's more of this stuff, so check it out and subscribe, but it does work. In terms of growing your watch time, one of the first things I look for is if you've curated your content into playlists. So right now I'm hovering at, I think about 50% of my of my stuff is it placed into some sort of playlist. Is that about the right ratio? Actually, generally I'd recommend that at least 90% of all of your videos should be curated in a playlist. I think because you have such a large corpus of learn to types of videos, you can actually group it by topic. For example, all learn quick videos based on sports, maybe everything related to food, very much sort of topic oriented. Yeah, I've done three Rubik's Cube videos and they should be in playlists and it's something that I've just forgot to do. And one of the great things about having a playlist is you can actually assign it as a section on your channel homepage as well. The idea here is you can showcase the diversity of content that you offer and make it easily accessible for somebody to find and to watch. Okay. One thing I noticed on your channel is that you tend to do quite a few collabs. Yeah, I've done a couple. Um, so when, when it really makes sense, when there's a lot of audience overlap, I've seen, I've seen it really work well for the channel. How do you best identify people that you want to collab with? So there's a combination of things you can use. You can use your analytics to identify your demographic um, and then look for people who may be interested in that content. Or you can listen to your audience. My audience were huge fans of Chris Ramsey, uh, a magician and puzzle solver on YouTube. And for a while they were demanding collaboration and we did it and they loved it. When it comes to the actual collaboration itself, what are some best practices to make sure people actually go from one video to the other? For the blacksmith collaboration I did, he was teaching me how to blacksmith. So people saw him working on my videos, um, saw the workshop, got an understanding of what he did and then went and subscribed to him. And that was the same on his channel. When they saw me on his channel, they had an understanding of who I was and what I did, um, and therefore had a reason to go and subscribe. Usually if it does well for one person, it can also benefit yeah. the other person who's collaborating with you. Totally. One of the things I wanted to ask you whilst I was here was about community posts, because I've never done one. I've always been scared of them. Um, I'm worried it comes off as spammy or too much or not what people signed up for. But I have seen creators use them um, in a positive way. I'm just wondering what are your thoughts on that? The community feature was created specifically because we heard creators feedback about wanting to engage their audience in between uploads. So it's a great way just generally to check up and see how your audience is doing, ask them a question, post a picture, a GIF, or whatever it may be. I think it's generally up to you how much you want to use community. I think it's very similar to your upload schedule. A big part of this too is just generally listening to your audience. You'll know whether or not they like it based on how much they engage with it. Mm -hmm. Are they liking your posts? Are they commenting and actually responding to the questions you're prompting? I think for me, it's a it's a useful thing to use because the community tab might help me to smooth out those inconsistencies by giving them something to update them. Like I am making the video, it's just this one's taken a bit longer. Great, well I hope this was useful for you today. It certainly was. Based on what we talked about, do you feel like you have a few main takeaways? Yeah, there's lots to think about, um, but I'm definitely gonna look at uh, creating another form of content um, based on what people are searching for. Also experiment with live streaming, um, see how it goes, and also uh, look at using the community tab at least once um, to see how people respond. Um, so I can give them an update in between long periods of, of no uploads. Great, now that Mike was able to figure out some concrete action items for his channel, we wanna hear from all of you. Let us know in the comments what you learned and what you want to implement on your own channel. 
And if you're interested in how channels get partner managers, check out this resource. Be sure to subscribe and check out more awesome videos on the YouTube Creators channel. Bye.